In this lecture, we're going to be learning about Post CSS. Post CSS is commonly installed with SAS and Webpack. It's a post processor for CSS. What exactly does that mean? In the previous lecture, we learned about SAS. SAS is a language of its own that is similar to CSS. It's sometimes referred to as preprocessor language because it's a language that gets compiled to CSS. It's because browsers don't understand SAS code. There are dozens of preprocessor languages available like Less or Stylus. In the end, they all get compiled to CSS. Post CSS takes a different approach. It is not a language. There is no special file extension. Instead, it's a library written in JavaScript. It'll convert your CSS into an object. The object it generates can be manipulated and transformed with JavaScript. Once you've made your changes, the object will be compiled back into CSS. The advantage here is that we can use JavaScript to make changes to the CSS code we write. This is why it's called Post CSS. It is a library that can modify your CSS code after you've written it. Post CSS is another library view will utilize under the hood. Let's learn how we can integrate Post CSS into our project. In the resource section of this lecture, I provide a link to the Post CSS repo. Feel free to check it out to learn more about Post CSS. To get started, we'll need to install Post CSS. Post CSS is an independent library. You don't have to use it with Webpack if you don't want to. I recommend integrating Post CSS into your workflow because it saves you time from having to run two tools. We can tell Webpack to run our CSS code through Post CSS automatically. We'll need to use a loader so that the two can work together. Inside the command line, run the following command npm install post css loader save dev. In some cases, we would usually install the library and loader separately. However, the loader we're installing already has the post css module as a dependency. It will be installed for us. With the loader installed, let's have Webpack run it. Inside the Webpack configuration file, we'll add the loader with the rest of the CSS loaders. We'll insert the loader after the CSS loader, but before the SAS loader. The name of the loader is called Post CSS Loader. The Post CSS Loader module expects CSS. It'll return CSS after it's been processed. We don't have to worry about it returning an object. It'll compile the CSS back into CSS once it's done processing it. The next step is to create the configuration for Post CSS. Keep in mind, Post CSS is a separate library. It requires separate settings. Inside the same directory, create a file called postcss.config.js. Post CSS will search for this file when Webpack runs it. It'll allow us to configure how Post CSS should process our code. Inside this file, we must export an object. The object will contain our configuration settings. There are several things we can do, but we'll keep it simple. One of the most commonly used features of Post CSS is the ability to add vendor prefixes. Vendor prefixes allow you to use the latest features of CSS in newer and older browsers. It enables features that aren't officially part of the core. The problem with vendor prefix is remembering which property needs which prefix. Post CSS is capable of adding vendor prefixes for us. This can be done by using a plugin. By itself, Post CSS doesn't do anything. It compiles CSS into an object and then spits out CSS again. If we want to make changes to the CSS code, we'll need to use plugins. Plugins are a way to extend post CSS that can interact with our CSS. There's a vast repository of plugins available. In the resource section of this lecture, I provide a link to a site called Post CSS Parts.
This is a site where we can find plugins from third-party developers. I highly recommend bookmarking it if you plan on using Post CSS in future projects. Let's switch back to the editor. Inside the command line, input the following command. npm install auto prefixer dash dash save dash dev. This module is a plugin for Post CSS. It'll scan our CSS properties for missing vendors. It'll add vendor prefixes to properties that require a vendor prefix for older browsers. After installing this plugin, we need to tell Post CSS to use it. In the configuration file for Post CSS, we'll add a property called Plugins. We'll set it to an object. Inside this object, the property name will represent the name of the plugin. The value for the property is the configuration settings for the plugin if there are any. We'll add the Auto Prefixer plugin and set it to an empty object. The Auto Prefixer plugin does have settings, but we won't be configuring any of them. You can check out the documentation on how to configure this plugin. The default settings work fine for our case. There's one last thing we need to do. We need to tell Post CSS which browsers we'll be supporting. This way, it doesn't add excessive CSS code to the final output. We need to list the browsers in the package.json. Open it next. At the bottom of the file, we'll add a property called browsers list. This property will be an array of browsers we want to support. This is the property the Auto Prefixer plugin will search for when it's optimizing our CSS code. We're going to add two items to this array. We'll add the following. Greater than 1% and last two versions. Rather than typing the list of browsers, we can set a list of criteria a browser must meet if it requires support. In this array, we're saying we want to support browsers with more than 1% of the global user base and the latest two versions of the browser. The last step is to run our code through Webpack. Before we do that, let's add a property that does require a vendor prefix. Switch over to the main.scss file. Inside the h1 selector, we'll apply the transform property and rotate the element by minus 7 degrees. The transform property is a property that requires a vendor prefix because it isn't supported on older browsers. In the case we forget to add the prefix, we won't have to worry about encountering errors on older browsers. The auto prefixer plugin will add it for us automatically. Inside the command line, we'll run the npm run start command. We won't receive any errors inside the console. Let's view the application in the browser. The text has been rotated by minus 7 degrees. If we were to inspect the element, we'll find the transform property we added along with the WebKit prefix. There are two clear benefits to this. If we ever forget to add a vendor, we can safely rest easy, knowing it'll be added thanks to post CSS. It also makes our code cleaner. We can forget vendor prefixes entirely and just stick to adding the CSS properties themselves. It will make your code look a whole lot cleaner. That's all there is to post CSS. It's a tool you can configure with plugins to transform how your CSS is outputted.